and welcome to Money Matters with Shannon Jackson, the personal finance show focused on moving you forward financially. On today's show, are you feeling stressed about your finances? If you are, you are not alone. According to Financial Planning Canada's 2023 Financial Stress Index, money remains the leading source of stress among Canadians. And over the next half hour, we're going to discuss the survey findings, and we'll have some advice for you on how you can alleviate some of that stress. My guest is certainly an expert on matters relating to money. An FP Canada Fellow, she's among the first ever group of certified financial planner professionals in Canada to receive the Fellow of FPSC distinction from the Financial Planners Standards Council in 2011. She is the first woman and first Canadian to be selected as the top senior wealth advisor of the decade by the International Association of Top Professionals. In 2020, she became the first Canadian to be selected as the top senior wealth advisor of the year by the same organization. She's also the recipient of numerous other awards within the financial field. She's also been honored for her philanthropic gifts and donation of time to many, many boards and charities that she supports. And she is a sought after media expert and a frequent contributor to the Canadian Business Journal. Welcome to Tina Terrantian. Certified Financial Planner and Senior Wealth Advisor at Asante Capital Management Limited. Thank you for being here, Tina. My pleasure, Shannon. Thank you for the introduction and great to be here with you. Now, before we get into our discussion, can you tell us more about yourself and Financial Planning Canada? Um, sure. As you mentioned, I have been uh, a financial planner and a CFP professional for a few decades and um, FP Canada is the body that regulates financial planning in Canada and uh, a CFP designation is the gold standard of designations when it comes to financial planning. So anybody looking for a qualified financial planner to help them with their finances should definitely be looking out for the CFP designation. And what is your role at Asante Capital Management Limited? Um, I'm a senior wealth advisor. I work mainly with um, entrepreneurs, business owners, uh, and wealthy families to help them preserve their wealth, grow their wealth. And I also do a lot of philanthropic tax planning. So I work with a lot of philanthropic families who want to maximize the impact of their philanthropy. And I show them strategies for how they can convert their taxes to charitable donations. I see. Well, today we're going to be talking about the FP Canada's 2023 Financial Stress Index. And this marks the sixth straight year that money tops the survey as the leading stressor for Canadians. And this is higher than even uh, the stress of perhaps our personal health, which is only about 23%, relationships at 17%, and our work at about 16%. And so money really does top this list. Now, considering the economic uncertainty facing Canadians and the financial strains so many are experiencing due to high inflation and rising interest rates, we really shouldn't be surprised by these findings. However, it's concerning that the survey shows that financial related stress has negative impact, I'm sorry, negatively impacted over about half of the country's population. So more Canadians are losing sleep because of money this year compared to last year. It's up from 43% now up to 48% of people that are feeling that stress. And about 36% of Canadians are experiencing mental health challenges such as anxiety or maybe depression that's related to this financial stress. So I want to talk about these results because they are concerning. Tina, are you hearing, uh, what are you hearing from your clients? Are these statistics ringing true? Well, definitely for the majority of population, they are true. People are struggling with their finances, but it is also true that people who work with CFP professionals uh, actually have a much lower level of anxiety. So the level of anxiety that I see 
in my clients definitely is not representative of what's going on in the broader population. Um, unfortunately, as much as you know, this FP Canada survey has showed year after year how much working with a CFP professional helps relieve the level of anxiety for people and help them sleep better at night, right now only 5% of Canadians work with CFP professionals. So yes, the results are definitely true for that 95% who are trying to do things on their own. I know I hear comments regularly from clients as a licensed insolvency trustee and people that are dealing with unmanageable debt. I hear on a regular basis that clients are not able to sleep or they're feeling physically ill or they're having other sort of mental health issues as a result of the financial stress that they're feeling. And so I, I think it, these statistics are, are really accurate based on uh, the experiences that I have every day with, with clients as well. So I want to get into a little bit more particulars about uh, that are found in the financial stress index. And so as mentioned, high inflation has made household budgets uh, even tighter. And this is adding to the stress level. And so it's no surprise that the FP Canada report shows that rising inflation remains a key challenge for nearly two thirds of Canadians. And inflation's impact on the costs of goods and services are contributing to that financial stress. So about 60% of Canadians are worried about food costs and 49% are feeling the pressure of the rise in gas prices. And of course, then there's rising interest rates that are also taking their toll on about one third of Canadians, especially for those homeowners that are perhaps carrying a mortgage on their home. Now, we anticipate that this stress is likely to rise as we know that there is a potential rise in interest rates expected perhaps this year. And there's also talk of maybe a recession that might be looming. So Tina, considering the level of financial stress that so many people are already experiencing, do we need to be concerned about the upcoming months and perhaps the changes that might be coming in the economy? Um, well, what you said is true. People are facing lots of reasons to be stressed about money and the slowdown in the economy that is expected is not going to help either because there could be possibility of job losses uh, that can definitely impact many families. But Shannon, when it comes to stress, um, the more control you have over your life, the less your stress level is going to be. Now, there are many things that we absolutely cannot have any control over. So you and I cannot control how inflation is going to pan out. We cannot control the economy, but we can control our own actions. We can have a financial plan. We can budget our spending and our savings. And that is what reduces stress because the more you know about your situation and the more you map out those worst case scenarios that could happen and have a contingency plan in place, the less your stress level would be. So as Canadians are struggling to sort of make ends meet at the moment, the survey shows that some may be putting their financial futures at risk and nearly half say that they have less disposable income compared to a year ago. And this is actually a substantial increase from last year. Um, and so last year, 39% of people reported that they had less disposable income, but this year it's now up uh, almost 10% to 48%. Can you talk about uh, why there's been such an increase in this feeling of having less disposable income this year? Um, well, definitely, I think inflation has a big part in it because a bigger chunk of everybody's budget is going to pay for food and gas and um, all sorts of necessities of life compared to let's say a couple of years ago when inflation was much tamer than before, uh, the, the job market is still strong. So I don't think it's that people are losing their jobs or getting paid less because actually wage growth has been pretty healthy. So more than anything else, it's the sting of inflation that people are feeling. And that again, highlights the necessity of budgeting. Uh, the more control you have over your budget and see how your cash flow um, is managed on a 
day-to-day or monthly basis, the more in control of your finances you will feel. I definitely agree with you. With inflation the way it is right now, I think we're finding that our, our dollars just have to stretch further, which then makes us feel that we just have less to spend. Um, so I can definitely see the, the pressure that, that people are seeing. Now, of course, then having less disposable income means that many are struggling to save or perhaps invest in, uh, in their financial future. Can you talk about the results of the survey with respect to savings and retirement? Well, again, you know, there is a lot of stress and um, negative feelings about what the future holds, which again goes back to, I think, lack of planning, because there are ways that you can trim your budget so that you're not going to face a huge difference in your lifestyle, but you can still focus on your long-term goals as well as meet your short-term obligations when it comes to cash flow and feeding your family. Um, So those stresses about retirement, again, a lot of them have to do with the fact that people have done no planning for their retirement. And if you don't plan for it, all you do is just feel anxiety because you have no idea whether you're going to be able to meet your goals or not. One of the other sort of disheartening statistics from uh, this survey is that more Canadians are feeling less optimistic that things are going to improve. The FP Canada survey shows nearly half of the poll participants, about 44%, feel less hopeful about their financial future, which is higher, of course, than last year, which is only 39%. And so what is, what's your reaction to this, to this statistics? this feeling of hopelessness that people are feeling. Um, is, there any, is there anything that maybe we can look forward to as we look into mm-hmm. our financial futures? Well, I can definitely see that, especially for the younger segment of the population, because home affordability is much worse than it was you know, a few decades ago. And that is definitely cause for pessimism for the younger generation. But at the same time, it was interesting that the same survey showed that about 42% of Canadians don't give as much importance to owning a home as the rest of the population do. So it seems like attitudes are also changing in the younger generation. And like any generation, you know, they will have to adapt to the realities and be able to work around what the situation is for them, it's still possible to have a good retirement, a comfortable retirement, um, if especially young people start early and do their planning as soon as they can. Well, we're going to get into that in our second segment. So for people that are struggling with financial stress and for those that are worried about their financial future, it's important to know that there are ways to reduce this stress. And we're going to have some great advice for you when we come back when Money Matters returns. This program is brought to you by Ignite TV. Now you're in command. Visit rogers.com for more details. In countries surrounding Sudan and across parts of Eastern Africa, millions of people are at risk of losing everything, even their lives. Conflict, climate, and hunger are forcing people from their homes and causing families and communities to struggle for survival. The Humanitarian Coalition is present, providing food, water, shelter, and medical care. Please donate today at together.ca and your donation will be matched by the Government of Canada. That's together.ca. Focus better. Partner better. Sleep better. Breathe better. Love better. Work better. Friend better. Unwind better. Everything gets better when you get active. Welcome back to Money Matters with Shannon Jackson. My guest today is Tina Tehrashian, Certified Financial Planner, Senior Wealth Advisor at Asante Capital Management Limited, and FP Canada Spokesperson. And we've been talking about the latest FP Canada Financial Stress Survey. 
And we know Canadians, including many here in Ontario, are feeling financial stress. High inflation and interest rates are taking a toll on already tight household budgets. Mm -hmm. And many are getting worried not only about how to get by today, but how to plan for their financial future. And these continue to be uncertain economic times, but there are ways to reduce the stress that you are feeling. And that's what I'd like to focus on for the remainder of the show. Advice for our viewers, because it's important that they know that there's help available. So Tina, the FP Canada Financial Stress Index shows the first step to relieving this stress is working with a professional. Can you talk more about this? Yes, absolutely. Um, going back to the same concept of gaining control over your finances, um, there are many areas that you on your own may not be able to manage. A CFP professional can help with every level and every aspect of your planning, whether it's budgeting, whether it's planning for retirement, whether it's tax strategies for reducing your taxes, estate planning, risk management, and if a CFP professional is equipped with the knowledge to help you in all of these areas, and they have the up-to-date knowledge because things are changing. You know, tax laws keep changing. Uh, every budget introduces new nuances that need to be taken into account. And it's very difficult for people to keep up with all of these if it's not their profession. So there is definitely value added to working with a CFP professional. I agree. The survey shows that over half of the respondents, about 55% of them, said that those who are working with a financial planner say that their financial stress um, is much lower or has no negative impact on their lives because they are able to have that plan in place. So there are clearly advantages to working with a professional. However, despite these advantages, only about one third of Canadians work with some type of financial professional. And like you said, even earlier in the show, only 5% work with a financial planner specifically. What are some of the reasons that people are so reluctant to reach out uh, to a financial planner and, and how can we change this attitude? That's a very good question, Shannon. I think for some people, um, it is the feeling that, oh, financial planning is only for super wealthy people and I don't have the level of wealth that would justify working with a financial planner. This is a myth. It is not true. There are financial planners who work with people at different levels of wealth. It is true that some CFP professionals have minimum asset levels for accepting new clients, but there are many younger CFP professionals who would be happy to work with young clients who are just starting out their planning. So that's one thing. The other issue is for some people who may be late to the game, they may have never done any planning and maybe they're in their 50s or 60s right now, there's a feeling that, oh, I've missed my chance, it's too late. And the embarrassment of not having started earlier could be a, an impediment as well. Uh, these are not helpful feelings. <laughs> it, I think it's never too late to do planning. It is true that the sooner you start, the bigger the runway that you have and the more you can accomplish with your planning. But it doesn't mean that if you're late to the game that you should not even think about it. It's actually even more reason to find a planner and start working uh, with that planner to again, put things on track and to make sure that at least you can achieve some of the goals that you have for yourself. I think for some people as well, just talking about money, it just, it, um, it, it seems to be a taboo subject. No one wants to talk mm -hmm. about money. And then especially if we are feeling uh, an individual stress level related to that, confronting that within ourselves and talking about that with with a professional I think can be quite overwhelming for some people and so I think it's important that we try to remember that the planner is there to just give you some guidance there's 
There's no judgment, anything like that. It's where are you today? What kind of a plan can we put in place for you moving into the future? And so the financial stress index also revealed some regrets uh, associated with managing our finances. About two out of 10 regret that they didn't save more money or start saving earlier. And they wish they had maybe started investing maybe earlier or maybe more wisely. And these results could prove to be sound advice for maybe some of our younger members of the audience. So what would you say to our younger viewers about the benefits of working with a financial planner and perhaps the benefits of starting early? Um, I think that is so true. I see that every day in my job as I talk to people. The biggest regret that most people have is, why didn't I do this earlier? Why didn't I start sooner? And uh, the results I could have had would have been uh, phenomenally better, which is true. But at the same time, as I said before, it's never too late. For young people in the audience, you have a golden opportunity in front of you. You have a much longer lifespan than people who are 10, 20, or 30 years older than you, and you should use it to your advantage. Even if you start with very small savings, even if it's $50, $100 a month, over time, the compounding can really help contribute meaningfully to your long-term and retirement goals. So don't dismiss uh, the savings amounts that you can afford just because they're small. It's still better to save that small amount than wait 10 years until you can save a bigger amount. Because guess what? You're gonna need significantly more <laughs> to get the same results if you wait 10 years or longer. Well, that's some really good advice for some of our younger viewers. Now let's shift to maybe looking at Gen Xers, boomers who might be watching. We know older people are often more reluctant to reach out to a financial planner because maybe they believe they've waited too long. And you touched on this a little bit earlier and some might feel embarrassed or being judged. Is it ever too late to start working with a financial planner? Absolutely not. And as I said, you know, there are planners who are happy to work with people at different stages of life different levels of wealth. Um, for people who are older, a lot of times I see that not enough attention has been paid to tax planning and estate planning. So some people are good savers. They have been saving well and they can retire comfortably, but they have been totally ignorant about the tax impact on their estate. And many of them are very interested in transferring wealth tax effectively to the next generation. So you cannot do that unless you get professional help to make sure that you are arranging your affairs in a way that you can pay the least amount of taxes and achieve the best intergenerational wealth transfer. And so we already know that the research is showing us that there are benefits, obviously, to working with a professional or with a financial planner. But it's also important, I think, to find the right planner that fits you and your situation, because success is tied to really full disclosure. And it means that the planner or the professional needs to be someone that you can trust and you can speak openly with, because you are going to be sharing quite a few things about your life. So, Tina, how do you ensure that you have the right financial planner? What should we be looking for? Are there questions that we should be asking? Mm -hmm. That's again, a very good question, Shannon. So I always um, think it's similar to finding a good doctor, right? So first of all, you wanna make sure that the person is qualified. So you want a doctor who is actually a doctor. Same thing with financial planning. The easiest way is, to look for a CFP professional, because as I said, that's the gold standard of designations when it comes to financial planning. Uh, CFP professionals are bound by a code of ethics, so you know that you're dealing with someone who has the knowledge, is being regulated by a you know, uh, regulatory body that ensures professionalism in, in that profession. But then the next step is obviously you want a good personality fit, again, like a doctor, 
there may be 10 different doctors who are very well qualified, but you only click with one of them. And same thing is true of financial planners. So you have to find the right personality fit. And once you have that, then you have to look at, at the fee structure of how they work. Does that make sense for your situation? What is the minimum asset level that they accept? Um, and once you know they've ticked off on all of these fronts and you have found somebody that you feel comfortable sharing the most intimate details of not only your finances but your life because guess what whatever happens in your life in terms of your family your health your colleagues it all impacts your finances so a good financial advisor would want to know everything about you not just how much money you have in your RSP and bank account, but everything about your family, what you want to do for your children, how you want to take care of your parents, what is your health situation, are there going to be any health issues down the road, all of these impact your planning, and you have to find someone that you feel comfortable sharing all of these details with, and someone that you can work with on a long-term basis, because the best financial planning relationship is one that is long-term. So what does a successful financial plan include? What, what could it possibly look like for someone? Well, it usually starts with a cash flow analysis to see what your spending habits are, what you need for your lifestyle expenses, what is your desired retirement lifestyle, and looking at risk management. So usually a good financial plan will have projections for retirement to see whether you are on track, how much you should be saving to get to your goals. It will have an analysis of the taxes that would be payable on your estate if you know, you die at life expectancy and also at sooner intervals. And it would have a good analysis of how much insurance you may need, what are the risks to your family? So it has to encompass all of these areas. And do you have any final thoughts for our viewers? We only have a minute left here. <laughs> well, I would say don't be overwhelmed by the thought of doing financial planning. It is a big project, but it's done in steps. So a good financial advisor will make it comfortable for you and it will be a process that you will enjoy. And once you've done it, you can sleep really well at night. <laughs> I totally agree with that. <laughs> and so for our viewers who are feeling stressed about their finances, maybe want to connect with you to get some advice from, from a professional, how can they reach out to you? Well, they can look me up on my website, Tina Tehranchian. Com, um, or reach me, um, you know, by phone at 905-707-5220. Well, Tina, thank you so much for joining me and sharing your advice with our audience. It's certainly lots to think about. And of course, timely as we head into the second half of 2023. And I also want to thank you, our viewers, for watching. Until next time, I'm Shannon Jackson. the Rogers TV viewer response line. Email us or connect with us on social media. At St. John Ambulance, we're all about community. We teach life-saving skills and provide community support through our volunteer services.